Uh, good morning slash afternoon. It's now afternoon. Uh, I'm Sam Humphreys. I am the only thing that stands between you and this man. Um, right. This talk is talk title. It's not called that. It is um, building a culture of cybersecurity. A case study to approach enhancing risk management. I'm looking forward to this. Um, quick things, real quick. Thank you to our sponsors. Diamond sponsor Adobe, Gold sponsors, Prisma Cloud, Seven Grep, Blue Cap, Plextrack, Toyota and Conductor One. All of you are volunteering and donating and participating. Lewis Hewerman. Hewerman, excellent. Got it. Um, the floor <clears throat> is now yours for the next 25 minutes. Big round of applause, please. Thank you, everyone. I'm super excited to be here today to talk about one of the things that I love in this world, which is cyber risk management. I'm excited to see so many people turn out who are interested in this topic with me. A little bit about myself. I'm a submarine fast attack Navy veteran. I was a radio man there for over 10 years, one of the highlights of my career. After that, I navigated through several three-letter government organizations, landed in commercial cybersecurity. Through that entire time, I picked up a couple famous certs, CISSP, PMP, handful of others that are kind of entry requirements, Security Plus, Network Plus, all those things. One of the things that I developed along the way is that I am a cyber nerd, but I'm also people curious. I always find it very interesting to see how people approach technology, both those who are interested in it and those who maybe feel like it's maybe beyond them a little bit, but they're still interested in it. Today, what we're gonna talk about is the perception gap. The perception gap between us, first of all, let me ask, how many cybersecurity practitioners do we have in the room, show of hands? Wonderful, wonderful, thank you. How many HR professionals do we have in the room? All right, I might, oh, did I see one? We have a tape up here she can't cross, right? It's uh, <laughs> There's lasers. Oh, what about marketing professionals? Any marketing professionals in the room? We got one right up here, she's doing fabulous. All right, there's a tape right there with lasers. All right. What we're gonna do is we're gonna approach this and we're gonna think about this in the concept of what makes us as cyber professionals so pessimistic about users, their actions, the systems, Right? I walk into the grocery store, I see credit card machines, I'm thinking PCI audit, you know, has the cashier been briefed, you know, but the people around me are just shopping and grabbing groceries. What creates this opposing optimistic perspective about technology compared to cyber practitioners' pessimistic view? Is it because our skill set, our training, where our focus is, when you've seen the things and you know the things, all you see are the things that can exploit it. And on the other hand, what makes others so optimistic? Is it ignorance is bliss? Or is it that they see things differently? Maybe there's a middle road. Maybe there's a table of commonality that we can find. Let's dig through some things and, and see what we can see. The two groups we're gonna talk about today are HR, and marketing. Now, how do, how do you know I'm not in marketing? How do you know? Because this is what I envision marketing, this is what, this, this is what I envision marketing people look like. They're all super excited at the computer. They're all pointed at the screen and they're just really, really woo. And, and we're wearing a Microsoft shirt and we're still happy. Woo. And it's, it's, that, that's how you know. But let's take a look, you know, so the HR department, what do, what do we typically see in the HR department? What kind of things are they dealing with every day? PDFs. Uh, PDFs? Yeah. yeah, PDFs. PDFs only from known entities? <laughs> no, no. They're looking at job resumes, both solicited and unsolicited. They're maybe looking at legal agreements, sometimes solicited, sometimes unsolicited. They're doing all the things that make us cyber practitioners scream, oh my God. But they're like, well, I have to, that's my job. Like, what, am I not supposed to open PDFs? What else? What's some of the low-hanging fruit? Word documents, email, people's information, HR systems. People in general. People in general, yes. <clears throat> one of the reasons I got into cyber is because I didn't have to deal with people. No. Nah. One, one of the HR systems, you know, typically, that's 2FA at best. We're talking login and password, 
Not a lot of depth in those they are getting better. That's not a criticism against HR technology. It's just the nature of IT systems today, SaaS based, where they're logging into an HR management system and they're handling extremely sensitive information on a laptop or an endpoint device that might not be completely controlled. If I hear someone say Okta controls it, mm, let, let's sidebar that one. But the point here is that the HR department is doing great things, they're also doing very dangerous things. But do they see it that way? If I go and I talk to the HR department and I say, what things are you doing that are dangerous? They're probably gonna list people. We deal with sensitive information of people and they'd be right. They probably would not list opening a PDF as one of the most dangerous things they're doing today. I might differ. Let's do a risk level check. High, medium, low. How would you rate HR in the organization? High, how many high? Okay, it's about uh, half the room. How many medium? Okay, that's the other third. How many low? Zero lows. I generally agree with that. So we, we understood that HR deals with sensitive data. They've got financial information, payroll information on everyone. They've got confidential records, all the things that we understand HR has. They deal with like breathing. They have legal compliance requirements. It's not just about your personal information. They also have to comply with state, federal, and then international, if the organization expands, requirements on how they move, handle, and view data, and who can be around them when they view that information. Again, they're probably not going to list opening a PDF as the worst thing they're gonna to do today. This is where culture comes in. Can we work with the HR department and identify what sensitive data is and help them see some of the threats that are involved with the ways they're accessing that information at no fault of their own, just the nature of technology? Is there a table for that discussion where you're at today? And what are those questions being asked? Now that we understand the current risk level, we identify HR as a high to medium risk in the organization based on our unofficial polling here. So let's turn our eyes to the marketing department. I know, I know, I, lasers, lasers. Marketing. How many marketers go to conferences and they have to meet with people? That's sort of why they're there, right? I mean, this is, we bring marketers in, they join the cyber team. We've got great marketers out in the middle ground today doing excellent work. They might not traditionally be cyber experts, but they're familiar with the product lines or they're cyber experts turn marketer. They went the other way. Occasionally extroverts happen in our world. It does occasionally occur. And so meetups are gonna happen. In this instance, a marketer was contacted to meet up for lunch by supposedly a foreign CEO of a startup. Let's do a risk level check. High, medium, low. How many for high? Okay, about 5% of the room. How many medium? Okay, about most of the room and how, how many low? Okay, got one, two. So this is sitting in the medium range for, for risk. What happens next? Oh, I'll send you an email. Let's meet up for lunch. Emails happen every day by the millions and the billions. And if you're in my inbox by the thousands, it's a lot, right? Either marketing or otherwise. So they get an email. How many times has someone here, show of hands, got an email with an attachment that just looks very innocuous, but it turns out to basically be the images and the signature, right? Yeah. 
That's, I've worked with organizations who actually require that you not put an image in your signature because that happens and because it can trick people into opening it. I endorse that approach. The body contains a base 64 blob. The person, maybe not knowing, thinks it's their image, tries to open it. What happens next? Bad things. It's called bad day. Some of the possibilities. This is just the normal, imperfect interoperability between Gmail and Outlook. Sometimes Yahoo and Gmail. These, these more text-based email agents sending things that don't translate the image. And so it attaches it. So far, we're within the realm of normal for a marketing person. Culture comes in by the marketing person saying, this seems weird, but we're not there yet. Next up, the person says, hey, I'm down here, down here in the lobby, gonna meet up. Well, wait a minute, now they're trying to, to move outside of it. Well, well, I'm outside now. What does this sound like to the cyber folks in the room? They're being lured out. What I call getting off campus. Getting lured off campus, outside of the comfort zone, to again, get that information from you little bit by little bit by little bit. Let's do a quick risk level check. How many people now are at high? Okay, about a quarter of the room. How many people are still at medium? Okay, how many people are low? So everybody shifted up a level, by and large. Because now, in our cyber brains, all the hairs in our back are just tingling. All of this sounds odd to us. To our resident marketing expert in the room, your risk level, is this high, medium, or low, or is this pretty standard fare? I mean, it happens, right? It does, a lot. This is now the ordinary. Do I trust anyone? No. <laughs> That's right. So, so far, to our marketing person, hmm, this happens all the time. Her objective is to meet and greet, produce information, share information. So from her perspective, the risk, very, very low to medium, a little stranger danger, but that has more to do with meeting a stranger than any technical implications. Well, that's culture versus fishing. Have we aligned with the marketing department to understand what things could go wrong, to share with them the things that we see? And did we work with them to understand their perspective of why this is every day for them? There's no way to not do things this way. The same as our HR reps. There's no way for them not to do things that way. So what's left? Our culture, a culture of saying, I know this seems weird, but there might be a more secure way of doing it. And I'm going to reach out to the cyber nerds and see if this triggers them in any way just to do a pulse check. What do we need for that conversation to occur? Alignment, a table that they feel good and open to come and discuss these things that they have questions about. If the culture is not built around one where we as the cyber folks are so pessimistic that we put up walls Users are dumb, they don't know anything, they don't understand technology, how can they possibly be trusted? If we put up those kinds of cultural walls, that's not inviting to the folks who may have simple questions. That's where culture versus phishing, how do we encourage the marketing folks to only use official channels for communication, to track an accountable 
accountability of these conversations? How do we teach them how to verify profiles? I understand your remit is to go and meet with folks and to transfer information between the two of you. How can we be conduits for a paved pathway of safety for those conversations? And it starts with culture. Now, I fooled all of you. We've been assessing risk this entire time. Did we ever define risk levels? No. What did I give you? High, medium, and low. Did we, the cyber folks, define what high means? Did we ever define what low means? Now, I, with a certain level of confidence, know that when I'm speaking with cyber professionals, I say high, medium, and low, we all see red, yellow, green. Do the non-cyber folks know what that means? Do they define it in the same way we do? And how can we correct or assure that that interpretation is equal? Engineering departments have the same challenge with cyber departments. What's high for them is not necessarily high for us. What's low for them, we're, the house is on fire, right? We can't call enough fire engines to some of the lows I've seen engineering departments deal with. They're like, oh, no, that's not a big problem. I'm over here freaking out. So what do we do now? We can mitigate some of the HR risk, strict access controls, private VLANs, training, having that discussion, inviting them to the table. Exclusionary discussions exclude. Open that door, create cyber champions in the HR department. How do we mitigate it? And marketing, same thing. Identify and verify, show them how to assess the risk from a cyber perspective. And then we, the cyber people, understand that for a marketing person, they have to enter these dangerous situations, technically speaking. How can they do these dangerous things safely? But to do that, our culture has to be inviting and open up the table of discussion. Where do we go from here? Let's revisit that gap perception. We've got the cyber SMEs pessimistic. The world, me going into a grocery store, risk, risk, aisle nine, risk. Everyone else just shopping for groceries. And how do we get the folks who, oh, every day is a picking flowers day and get them to see like maybe there's some snakes in that grass that they're not aware of and help them align their measurement of risk with our measurement of risk, high, medium, and low, but also maybe teach us something about what they have to deal with day to day. Cultivating a culture of cybersecurity risk awareness should extend beyond the technical teams. It's about empowering everyone with the knowledge and skills to protect themselves and the organization. It might not be our fault if something happens, but it is our problem. And it's also our duty to empower everyone in the organization to appreciate how cyber risk can both empower and also hurt us not handled properly. Hopefully you can all go back with this message to your cultures and see how you're inviting those folks to the table. I'd love to open up to any questions. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that was great. Really, really good. Does anyone have a question? We've got probably time for one. Or none. <laughs> also fine. She, um, she, gave, she made me speed round that. She was like two minutes. Away. No, that's great. Uh, <laughs> got them. Marketing. How do you uh, define the risk levels to bridge the gap? Uh, well, how do I? So I, I heard two questions. One, how do I define the risk level and how do I bridge the gap? So I define risk levels specifically based on the organization because what I consider high, they might not consider high. So step one is understanding the organization. What's important to them? What do they think is at risk? 
what can impact their ability to make money? At the end of the day, every business is there for that reason. We need to identify the crown jewels or the things that might impact their ability to make money. Two, how do I bridge the gap? Identify who the key relationships are that might help or hinder the mitigation of risk. And that's through relationship management. You know, catch more bees with honey than you do vinegar. If we run around like the fear police, that might instigate short-term gains, but it doesn't create a positive culture around cyber. We don't need to be the no police, and we don't need to be, you know, we don't even no, 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 right? That's not us. We're there to empower. It's a great question. Awesome. Thank you. Great question indeed. Right, everyone, please, big round of applause.